The big question this week is what is the case for building a metro in the Middle East? We're here to find out if there are other cities ready to do that. My name is Shayan Shaquille, joined with Eddie Taylor. Welcome to Inside AB. So Eddie, we have a piece in this week's Arabian Business, and it's talking about why Abu Dhabi should be the next city in the Gulf to build its own metro rail transit system. I mean, it makes a really compelling case. It came from Alstom GCC's team A Tran, uh, which is the French train builder. Right. And she was making a very compelling case why Abu Dhabi should be the next Middle Eastern city after Dubai and Cairo to be looking at a mass transit system. Lots of really interesting use cases and benefits from having one. And Abu Dhabi seems sort of uniquely positioned geographically to benefit benefit from it with lots of broad avenues and things like that. But there are lots of benefits to why Abu Dhabi now ought to embrace the idea. Well, I mean, it would definitely connect parts of the city together. That's an obvious benefit. But what else could Abu Dhabi gain from having a metro rail system? I mean, this, is, this could be a costly investment. It is a costly investment, but I think there are so many different parts of this that which we can try and unpack. I mean, from the very, very initial point, it's great for a city's branding. Right. It's great that when you step out of a, of a brand new airport and the new midfield terminal is coming on soon, that you can get onto a, a gleaming metro and head straight to downtown. Mm -hmm. That's a really kind of compelling a, a billboard, if you like, for the city's technological and business aspirations. That's one sort of element to it. But there are other elements to it as well, like a lot of millennials now want to choose to live and work in cities that have ease of use, that have green technological solutions for their transport. A metro can easily provide those. Right. You've also got the broader ecological goal of getting people out of their car. You know, you're decongesting the streets at rush hours. You're stopping all of those, you know, pollutants going into the atmosphere. Reducing accident twice rates. a day, reducing accident when we've got terrible accident rates here. Yeah. So, um, and there are also elements of development as well. I mean, we've seen the the development that's been spurred by the Dubai Metro, where around each of the stations on the route there are lots of economic clusters that are being built with retail outlets and with residential clusters and all of the things that come along with that. So there are developmental um, uh, benefits to this as well. So there's lots of reasons why Abu Dhabi should grasp the nettle. Um, one thing that the metro in Dubai has done uh, for, the, for the Emirate is that it's enhanced its global prestige quite a bit. I mean, it's the longest automated metro system in the world and Abu Dhabi could benefit from that too, given its ambitions, couldn't it? Yeah, a lot of these things are also sort of test labs for technology, aren't they? You know, you don't, you, you think of uh, the idea to have a mass transit system can actually lead to new ideas and new ways of putting them into practice. So Dubai went with the driverless trains, which is, you know, we're all talking about driverless transport now, but we've already got it in Dubai with, with the metro. Right. So Abu Dhabi can look at harnessing new technologies to come up with even better solutions. Um, then there are other things like uh, passenger information boards can harness new technology. Right. There's lots of different things that come with uh, mass transit systems that aren't restricted for getting people from A to B. Well, if uh, Alstom can figure out a cost-benefit case for this, Abu Dhabi probably be, the be one of the better cities. And it's been child in other cities in the Middle East as well, hasn't it? Well, we, well as, as we said, we already have it in Dubai, and it's right. been a phenomenal success in terms of user. I think probably better than anybody mm -hmm. actually envisaged when it thought, uh, when, it, when it was first launched. I right. would say that Cairo is probably the only other city that's kind of experimented this on a mass scale. It's got lines one, two, and three, right. massively popular. Uh, massively beneficial to helping people move around what is a very big and what is a very congested city. And as a, on a flip side, I would look at certain cities that don't have them. If anyone's ever been to a man in Jordan, for instance, that's been trialing various mass bus routes and things like that without any success. I mean, half of the roads are kind of dug up and haven't had the, uh, the desired application even built yet. Getting right. around at rush hour is increasingly difficult. And this is a massive drain on a city's economy. If you can't move people around, if people can't get to appointments, if business can't be conducted, it, it wastes so much money. So there are real economic benefits to this. All right, driving the conversation right there. Thank you, Eddie, for uh, those insights and a great piece to read by Team HN and the magazine this week. You've been watching Insight AB. Remember to subscribe and comment below and tune in tomorrow for the next uh, edition in this series. Thank you for watching.